Shalom, and welcome to this week's Bible study. This week, we will be talking about the uh, parable of the sower. And before we get started, we'll go ahead and sing our song. This week, we will be singing, Are You Washed in the Blood? And I'll go ahead and bring that up now. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing time? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Okay, and so uh, this week we'll be speaking about the parable of the sower. And so we'll go ahead and pray before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you will help us to study your word today and learn the truth from it and teach us your word. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so today we'll be talking about the parable of the sower. And I'll go ahead and read that passage. Uh, it's in Matthew thirteen three through 9 and then we'll go down to thirteen eighteen through 23. So Matthew thirteen three through 9 says, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. 
and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundred fold, some sixty fold, some thirty fold. Who has ears to heal, let him heal. Now, um, we come down here, and Jesus explains the meaning of the parable in Matthew thirteen eighteen. Starting in verse 18, it says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, uh, heareth the word and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. And then it says, But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, fold, uh, some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And so this is the parable of the sower. Um, and, you know, when I was growing up, um, my dad and other people, they didn't really understand about the uh, seed that fell in the stony places and the thorny and among, among the thorns, because it says that the ones that receive seed in the stony places receive it, and uh, it also says that um, the uh, ones that received that was in the thorns also received the word. Um, but you know, it doesn't actually say that they believed it; it said they received it. Um, because, as we know, the ones that went into the stony places and the thorns, they did not endure. They fell away, either because of persecution or because of riches. So either life got too hard and they thought, well, okay, this Jesus, following Jesus is too hard, so I'm leaving. Or they thought they found something better than Jesus. Like, uh, well, you know, Jesus is great, but um, I can come over here and get all this money. You know, um... And so then they left Jesus and went to go get money. Um, so when so both of these, whether it was around the thorny places or the stony places, they received it, but they didn't truly commit. They didn't truly believe. They didn't truly yield to God's will. They did not give their heart fully to God. And they ended up trading Christ for something else, for easier life, for something that they thought was better. Um, and so, uh, you know, a lot of times I've been taught that, well, these people really say they just fell away. Well, it, I, you know, I just realized it says they received it, didn't even say that they actually believed. Um, the Bible seems to make it very clear here that the ones that go in the thorny ground and the stony places are never saved. They did not believe. Um, they, uh, to believe, remember, to believe in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. To believe in Jesus is not mean to only be fully persuaded in your mind of who Jesus is and what he did. But as we know, and as I've preached a lot, the word believe in Romans 10, 9, in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, roots backwards to a, twice to a word, which means obey. And so the word believe itself is Strong's number 4100, and this one also means to commit um, in the Greek. And then that comes from a word... Uh, number 4102 and that word also means uh, continuancy in the religious profession and in the gospel. Um, I've actually got it right here. I'll read it word for word here. It says um, yeah 4102 it says persuasion that is credence moral conviction of religious truth or the truthfulness of God or religious teacher 
especially reliance upon Christ for salvation, abstractly constancy in such profession. By extension, the system of religious gospel truth itself, assurance, belief, belief, faith, fidelity. So it's constancy in the profession of faith. If they fall away, they will never save. It's, 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 it's constancy. Okay, so when someone truly gets saved, they cannot fall away. They can't. They can't fall away. Uh, um, like the like the ones in the thorns and the stones did. Well, they leave Christ for something else. They fall away. A truly saved person cannot do that. So you know, and the Bible says that it's the soil of the heart. It said the seed that fell into good ground, and those that received it with a pure. And let me find that passage again. Let's see. Um, this would be Matthew thirteen. 23, Jesus is speaking. He said, But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also bears fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So it's the seed, it's the ground, is the heart ready, is the heart good, you know, that's receiving it. Um, that's what Jesus looks at. And Jesus knows if someone's heart is truly for him or not, because look at something else. Um, okay, in John 2, 20 through 25, the Bible says that people believed in Jesus, but Jesus did not commit himself to them, okay? So look at this, John 2, 23 through 25, says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and he did not that any should testify of man, for he knew not for he knew what was in man. Okay? So when someone comes to Christ for salvation, he looks at their heart. If it's not good ground, if it's not a true and sincere, and they're not fully committed to him, he does not commit himself to them. People can think that they believe in Jesus, but and, and the heart deceives them, and if they don't truly commit, then he does not commit himself to them, and he does not save them. They do not get sealed with the Holy Spirit. They do not get saved. Uh, he, he does not make a commitment to them, okay? So, that's, uh, you know, it's not just where you say a prayer and believe facts, and you're saved. You have to commit your life to Christ. If you do not truly commit your life to Christ, he does not save you. Okay, now I was thinking about this and I thought, well, Lord, there's so many people who, you know, they make a profession and they last a while and they think they're saved. You know, how they, how can I help people know, you know, it, you know, what about these people? If they die, you know, they just go to hell and then they're shocked because they're in hell when they were, you know, they were, it said that they endured for a while. So they endured for a while and, and God said, and God started showing me other verses. Um, this is where some other teachings come in at. Um, the Bible says in Matthew ten twenty two, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Okay? So, um, someone who is... Who thinks that they're sincere and and they've made a profession of faith and they haven't fallen away yet. Because the Bible says they continue for a while. I, you know, my dad seemed to have continued for 20 plus years and then he fell away. Um, you know, some people, they will continue for years and years and then they end up falling away. A truly saved person cannot fall away like that. Uh, if they're truly in with the Holy Spirit. But God has mercy, and it says if because remember it's also if you diligently seek Him, you will find Him. Okay, so what happens if someone's diligently seeking God and they think they're saved and they die, but they're actually um, one of these stony or stone, stony places, but they haven't fallen away yet, and they died. The Bible says that they shall be saved. Okay, and those other scriptures. For this, um, 
And because it says, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Now, someone who is Holy Spirit and dwelt and sealed, someone who's truly saved, they will endure to the end. They they cannot fall away. They will, you know, that that is, that's all security. That is all promise. The Holy Spirit of promise, that's all sealing. We can't lose it. Well, the Holy Spirit will force us to endure. We will not fall away. He won't allow us to. But someone who is in that area where they said a prayer, they believe the facts, they think they're committed, they think they're saved, and they are serving him in the faith when then they get in a car accident and die and they haven't, you know, fallen away yet. Okay, that's the people who are saved who endure to the end. They shall be saved, okay? Um, so we will look at that a little bit more deeply here. There's other scriptures. Also, which says, um, if someone, but Jesus made it very clear here. Here's another part of this. It says Mark eight thirty four, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Bible indicates here, and in another verse of Revelation, I'll bring up in just a moment, that some martyrs, okay, if you are, if someone dies for Christ and for the gospel, if they were in that area where, okay, they're among the thorns or they're among the stones, they didn't fully commit, but then they are martyred, then they are saved. He's not going to let someone, because God's concerned about the heart and total commitment. You can't get a better commitment. You can't be more totally committed than to die for Christ. That is the ultimate commitment. Uh, now, a truly, someone who is, you know, they, they made a true profession and they fully committed at the moment of their profession, you know, they will never deny Christ. They will die for Christ. The Holy Spirit won't let them deny him. Um... But a person who is in that area where there was stony ground or thorny ground, they did not fully commit at the profession of faith, they make a decision right then, am I going to fully commit or not? And if they if they fully commit, then they are saved at death. They are saved at that moment. It says if you lose your life for Christ's sake and the gospels, you're saved. Okay, he's not going to let someone go to hell that was that committed to me. He's, he's merciful. Okay, now the Bible actually gives an account of this in Revelation. Uh, you go Revelation 6, 9 through 11 first. Did I, let me see if I have to look that up or if I, yeah, I got to look that up. Okay, it's easier for me to do it this way because of the other things I've got. It's about I got to kind of skim over like two or three chapters in Revelation, uh, tie it all together. So if you go to Revelation 6, 9 through 11 here, you've got the fifth seal and the tribulation saints. Um, so Revelation 6, 9 through 11, it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge all blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay, then it goes on into talking about the sixth seal and the earthquake and like the stars fall from heaven and the big... You know, and and the mountains don't move, so there's like a big destruction. And the people on the earth, the wicked, are calling to the mountains to fall on them, to hide them from God's wrath. Then you go to chapter 7, and it talks about um, 
the uh, 144,000 being sealed, and then the um, after the 144,000 are sealed, the wrath of God comes upon the earth even more. The 144,000 are sealed to protect them from God's wrath. Um, but then after they are sealed, uh, that allows God's wrath to come down even more upon the earth. But before, but in that time, it says, right after the 144,000 are sealed, it's, uh, in chapter 7, verse 9, it says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying, unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them any more. Uh, on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Okay, now they had washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb by dying. That was their commitment. They died for Christ. Okay? That was their commitment. Then, after, because they died for Christ and they did totally commit to him, after death, in Revelation 7, 17, it says that God would lead them to fountains of living water, which is, we know that living water is salvation. There's a few verses that says that very plainly in the Bible. Uh, Revelation 22, 17 Living water is always soul salvation. It is salvation. So Revelation 22, 17 says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And, who, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Water of life, living waters, this is salvation. Also, go back to the woman at the well. John four ten through 14. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest ask of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman says unto him, Sir, thou hast now seen a draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? And drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. Okay? So we know that living waters is salvation. Revelation here with these people who are martyred, says that they receive living water after death because they died for Christ. So, um, this is like, you know, right now and for the last few years over in Africa and the Middle East, you've had terrible persecution over there. And, you know, I used to be concerned because so many of those people, they're Orthodox. They're like Greek Orthodox or Coptic Christians. And I'm going... Well, are they going to heaven because they don't preach a pure gospel? They add a lot of rituals and works and they add all this stuff in there and they don't believe in true biblical salvation. And I was concerned about that. And it's taken me a few, the last couple of years of studying this out and I'm just now sharing it with you guys because I, I've just recently finally, you know, understood it. Um, those people, they don't fully understand biblical salvation they add a lot of things because they did 
sometimes they're called Eastern Catholic. They like broke off from the Catholic Church. They don't recognize the you know when the Pope came up and said that he was over he was God's bike on earth. They you know split and um, they broke off from the Catholic Church. But they do have a lot of like they pray to saints and they they've got a lot of stuff. And then you know like I went and studied what they believe because I wrote a letter to Putin when he uh, invaded Ukraine. And uh, tried to share the gospel with him, and I went and looked up what you know because all the he's Western Orthodox, but all the Orthodox churches pretty much believe the same on salvation. I found out. So as I was studying that, it's like they add a lot of rituals, and it's like, well, you have to do this and do this and do this. So they do at the core, you know, they believe that Jesus is God. That um. You have to believe in Jesus to be saved, and you have to commit your life to him, but then they add in, like, they make it very ritualistic, so it could be very easy, it's like more so that the people would be trusting in ritualistic works like baptism, pilgrimages, di these different things that, um, you know, pilgrimages aren't even in the Bible, um, but they add in all this other stuff, and they do pray to saints, and they think that, and so they, they miss that Jesus is the only mediator, They've got some anti-biblical stuff, and, and they don't hold the Bible as the only truth. They have a bunch of other books that they think that the apostles wrote when they, and other church fathers wrote, um, but, it's, you know, and they, they're probably, like, the other ones that they say that some of the other apostles wrote are probably fake. Um, and then, like, they hold to different writings of James and stuff that they claim that he wrote. I'm not convinced he wrote them. Um, I've studied some of that, um, but I went through there and I studied this stuff. So they, those Orthodox Christians over there, and most of the, you know, there's many and many of those being killed for their faith by the Muslims. And I was like, you know, are, are these people going to heaven or not? Because they don't, you know, are they, is God just not letting them go to heaven? Because, I mean, they're sincere. They think they know the truth and they're dying for Christ. And I got to looking at this, and here you've got people who die for Christ, but apparently they didn't understand the gospel perfectly enough because after death, Jesus leads them to fountains of water. And Jesus himself said that if you die for Christ, then you go to heaven. So it's possible for a person to die for Christ, and it says, He that endures to the end shall be saved. So it is possible for someone to not fully understand the gospel, but they're doing the best they can, and they're doing the best they know, and then they die for Christ, and God's like, okay, you were com you in you proved your commitment, you died for me, so here's white robes and here's fountains of living water, and he and so that the Bible does show that. Now I would just want to bring out, don't take that chance. If you're hearing this today, you know, I've got videos that show how to know that you are truly saved and the Holy Spirit is in you and you're sealed and you're promised that you won't fall away. I mean, yes, the Bible does appear to show that someone can be saved at death if they're faithful or soon after death if they're faithful. But don't take that chance, okay? Get on your face before God and make sure you're saved. You know, because because it's dangerous. I mean, you can fall away, so don't don't take that chance. But it's just that there is. So you know, the ones who preach, well, we don't know if we're saved or not until the end. You know, a lot of people. You no, know, I've never heard anyone actually bring this all together and explain all this. The Baptists are like, well, you make a commitment to cut. You you know, you believe and and you're saved and, and you make a commitment and then you're saved forever, no matter what you do. Well, I found a lot that said that that's not right because a saved person can't do certain sins. And they're sitting there saying, well, this guy murdered this guy, but he's a Christian because he said a prayer when he was a kid. Okay, that's not true. Um, he's not a Christian. He's not truly saved. Um, then you have, you know, it's not just whoever endures to the end and we just can't know if we're saved or not because we can know. We can get the truth, we can believe the truth, we can truly make that commitment and know that we're saved and know that we're on drugs and know that we're going to heaven. We don't have to take that chance. Um, we can know it. Um, you know, those who believe that salvation is kind of some kind of a journey or a path, that could 
sort of maybe fit in this a little bit. I'm kind of shy of that yet. Um, because true salvation is a decision and everything, but these people, you know, you, you know, they make a profession and then they live their life and they're trying to do right and then they, they diligently seek him and they die for him or they die in faithfulness. They haven't fallen away. And the, God says that they get saved. He, he does not send them to hell. They were saved at death or soon after. Um, he leads them to living in water. Um, so, you know, all of those teachings kind of go around. Everybody's going around it. And nobody's hitting the bullseye. So I'm trying to hit the bullseye on it. Um, you know, so... Yes, you can know that you're saved, and a truly saved person who is indwelt with the Holy Spirit can never lose it. But there is mercy with people like the Coptic Christians, who are mixed up in a religion that's not that doesn't preach a totally pure salvation. But they are dying for Christ, and they are you know at the core of the you know, and and they it's hard to see it because they got all this other stuff. But the core of their belief is that Jesus Christ is dead, that he died on the cross, that, that Jesus Christ is God, that he died on the cross and rose again to save them, and they have to believe in Jesus to go to heaven. They have to believe that, you know, and they have to believe and trust in Jesus to go to heaven. That is the very core, but then they have so much other stuff that kind of hides that core, so, you know, they do believe in Jesus, but then they add a bunch of stuff, and so they're kind of mixed up. Um, so, you know, they keep, they, they're trusting partly in ritualistic works, so therefore they're not trusting fully in Christ. So the Holy Spirit does not indwell them, they're not sealed. But if they endure to the end, if they die faithful, and they don't even have to die, if they, if someone dies and they have been faithful to Christ and they haven't fallen away, then they get saved. Because in another place it says, uh, be faithful, let me see where that's at. Um, okay, it says, um, Revelation 2, 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Okay, that crown of life is everlasting life. That is salvation. So, be faithful unto death. So, someone who is, whether they're martyred or not, if they're faithful to God unto death and they haven't fallen away, then, you know, if they thought they were saved and they actually weren't, then Christ will save them at death. He will lead them, because it's right here in Revelation. He leads them to living waters after death. When I saw that, I was like, wait a minute, is that what I think it is? Am I understanding? And with all these scriptures, I mean, it's not what I was taught. But so far, with what I'm finding in scripture, it is true. In another place in the Bible, God says, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy, and I will have judgment upon whom I will have judgment. It's not our job to sit here and dictate to God who he saves and how he works salvation and what he does. Um, he's God. He can have mercy on people, and his word promises. It is a promise. If you die for Christ, if you lose your life for Christ, you will save it, meaning you will be saved. And he that endures to the end shall be saved. If, if everybody, if the only way that anybody could ever be saved was to just simply, at the moment of their profession, fully understand everything and believe and commit right, then why would it say, and since... You have the if you have the Holy Spirit in you, then you're going to endure because He won't let you fall. Why would He say He that endures to the end shall be saved? That would seem like it shouldn't even be be there because well, of course you're going to endure if you're truly saved. So this must be this is speaking about something else. This is speaking about these people who are fall who are the thorny and stony ground. They. They don't fully understand it. They don't fully commit. Something is missing. But they die before they fall away. And they even make the commitment. You know. And die for Christ. If they're martyred for him. Then God's like. Okay. He that endures to the end shall be saved. You know. If you are faithful unto death. I will give you a kind of life. That. And then in Revelation 7.17. It says that he leads them 
to fountains, to living fountains of waters. We know living water is salvation. Okay, there's no that that's salvation. Um. So, uh, yes, a person can know that they're saved or not before death. Um. You know, we don't have to wait till we die to know we can know. But God does have mercy on those who are truly seeking him. Remember, the Bible says also in Hebrews 11.6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay? So to come to God, you have to believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That doesn't mean you have to, it doesn't say you have to understand every little thing perfectly. And God's just, even if you die for Christ, he's going to send you to hell because you didn't understand something right. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, um, no. Uh, he is merciful. If a person diligently seeks him, even if they don't fully understand anything, they're growing, they're learning, they're diligently seeking him, and they die, or they're martyred. You know, they die in an accident or something, or they're actually martyred for him, and they give their lives for him. God doesn't send those people to hell. It's right here in the Bible. You know, um, he uh, he that endures to the end shall be saved. And, you know, in Revelation, you've got people who died for Christ. They didn't understand something, right? These are probably like Coptic Christians or some kind of Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, something like that. They didn't understand something, right? They weren't truly saved. They weren't endured. They weren't truly saved, but they were seeking and they thought they were, and they died for Christ. And when they died, they you notice their souls are under the altar. They're, they're by themselves. Why are these people by themselves? They're not with the other saints. They're by their souls are under the altar. And here's the indication that they want to, because they're begging God for vengeance. Okay? As Christians, we're not supposed to beg God for vengeance. Okay? But these people... This shows that they were not truly saved yet, even in heaven. They're under the altar, and they're all begging God for vengeance. Okay? The Bible says not to avenge ourselves. The Bible says to pray for those that persecute us. We're supposed to love our enemies. These people are not saved yet, but they died for Christ. They com they were committed to him. Though Even in heaven, they still got... It's still showing that they still... Are not quite right on everything because they're asking God to avenge them. They're praying for vengeance. Um. So then God doesn't rebuke. He just says, "Well, you know, wait until your brethren die. You know, there's others that have to be martyred." And He commands that white robes be given to them at that point. They don't even have the white robes yet, and they're just sitting on the altar. Okay. Um, these, these, this is a different group of people. Okay, they're sitting under the altar. They have not received white robes yet. Then they receive white robes. Then it says that he shall lead them unto living fountains of water. So, though, you know, they are, this is a different group of people. And they are saved after death. They're, you know, they're led to, you know, Jesus sits down. That leading them to fountains of living water. He'll sit down. And he will explain proper biblical salvation, whatever they were missing, whatever they didn't understand. He will explain it to them. They will accept it, and then they will be saved. But they never, they never experience hell or anything. He, he, he does. And see, the Bible does say that um, in Hebrews nine twenty seven. Okay, so if you go to Hebrews 9, because this is where they get, well, there's no hope after death at all. You can't be saved at all after death. Now, if you live a terrible, wicked life and absolutely, totally rebellion to God, then, yeah, he probably just going to send you to hell. And you're not getting any kind of a chance or nothing. I mean, he just, he just, you know, you're rebellious. You don't care. And you won't, you know, you won't take, you won't do the best you can. And so he's not, he doesn't. You know, he's just going to send you to hell. Um, if you're not, you have to diligently seek him. Okay. You have to diligently seek him. This is just a promise that if you diligently seek God and you think you're saved, but the truth is that you're not really saved because you missed something, 
and you die, you're not going to wake up surprised in hell, okay? He's going to take care of you. He's You're not going to be surprised. Oh my goodness, I lived a faithful life. I preached the gospel. I died for him. How in the world did I end up in hell? That is not going to happen to you. Okay, that's what, and that's why I was taught what happened to people. If they didn't know it wrong for one, line up on line, please everyone, if they had anything wrong, then they could live their whole life dedicated to, like, these copy Christians and people will, yeah, they're living their whole lives, they're dedicated guns, they're dying, but they're going to hell. Because they didn't understand every little thing. That's not what the Bible says. Okay, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that they endure to the end so they shall be saved. So they're saved after death. He has mercy on certain people. If they diligently seek him He had, and, and they just haven't found it. They haven't quite found it at death. But they were diligently seeking. They were still seeking. He goes ahead and saves them. He has mercy. They did the best they could. They tried. You know, they, they knew what they knew and, and they tried. Um, and they were seeking him. You know, this is not, well, uh, well, anyone who is sincere in their religion like Buddhists go to heaven. Well, no, because they were not seeking Jesus. They were seeking Buddha. Oh, okay. So, yes, uh, there, people can take this and really extrapolate it and go crazy with it. And so that's why I'm trying to be, I know I'm walking on dangerous ground. I know that. But I'm... This, I'm trying to just show exactly what the Bible says. I'm not saying that all sincere beliefs lead to heaven. No, you have to diligently seek God. You have to believe, you have to believe in Jesus. These people do believe in Jesus. You know, I've studied the Cop the Coptic and the Orthodox religions. They do believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again. And that they have to trust him for salvation. That is the core of the belief. But then they go adding all this other stuff. And a lot of people, like Putin himself, has made a profession of faith. But the guy's not saved. I mean, he doesn't prove that. That's why I see him, the two gods, and said, Hey, look, you're not truly saved. You're not understanding something. Right? Here's the truth. You've got to fully commit. You've got, And it's not, you don't trust in these rituals at all. Okay, it's just, but you have to totally commit to Christ and it's it's obeying him. And uh, he didn't listen because he's still trying to overtake Ukraine. You know, and I specifically mentioned that. I said, you can't continue this murderous war in Ukraine and, and go to heaven because this is, this is wrong. Um, and, uh, you know, he didn't listen to me. Um, but they do, it's, it is possible for people in that religion to get saved. Um, because the core, but it's, it, they have to really diligently seek God, and many of them probably do have to die for him in order to be saved, because they add so much to it, and it gets so confusing, and it's very easy for someone, especially if someone is raised up in that from a small child, they're just trusting, okay, I was baptized, I did this pilgrimage, I did this thing, and that thing, and that thing, and all these rituals, I did this ritual, and that ritual, and they miss the core doctrine of faith in Christ. They don't quite grasp that. And they keep adding all these other things and they think that they have to do Christ plus rituals. That, they're not going to truly get saved doing that. But if they continue to truly seek God and they're doing the best that they can and they do have that uh, understanding that salvation comes through Jesus and he is God and he died on the cross and rose again, then if they die for Christ, if they live, you know, they try their best to obey the Bible and they try to obey God and they live for Christ and then they die for him, God's not going to send them to hell because they had a little bit of confusion with rituals because that's what the religion taught. Okay, the Bible says that, you know, these people, he that endure to the end shall be saved. You know, that's what it says. He that endures to the end shall be saved. So that is these people who, you know, they're seeking. They haven't quite found it. But they're trying their best and they're faithful to God. And they do believe in Jesus. And they just, you know, they, they're just confused on a little bit. So they're not actually saved yet. But if they die in that state, and especially if they die for Christ, the Bible promises that they will be saved. 
You know, Christ will save them after death, and it actually gives in Revelation seven seventeen it says that he will lead them unto fountains of living water. In chapter six it says that these uh, the souls of these people are under the altar, they're not with the other Christians. They don't even have white robes yet. And then Jesus says we'll give them white robes. You know, and they're praying for vengeance. You know, they're in heaven and they're praying for vengeance. Um so, you know, it it shows this. Um, and then, you know, Jesus told the, uh, uh, it said there in Revelation 2 that if you are faithful unto death, I will give you a crown of life. Okay, so that crown of life is salvation. Um, so yes, a person can know, can find the truth and know it before they die, like I have, um, and that is best because then you know, okay, I'm sealed. I can't fall away. I'm not going. The Holy Spirit is not going to let me do anything to uh, condemn, be condemned. Um, that is best because if something with because with these people who are just like seeking and they didn't haven't found it, they can fall away, and then they're going to end up in hell because they stopped diligently seeking and they never they they never found it and they fell away before they found it. Um, so that's, that's the point. If you're diligently seeking, then God's not going to let you go to hell. But if you fall away before you find it, then you will go to hell. Um, so, and that is the point of the, uh, parable of the soul, or the ones on the thorns and the stony places. They start out good, but then they fall away. Um, so, uh... Also, um, you know, we know that a person can truly be saved before death and they can know it and they can't lose their salvation because, and the, and the Holy Spirit actually seals them and indwells them. Um, now with these other people, you mean they can preach and you can see like the Holy Spirit's result on them in their lives, but, but the Holy Spirit can come up on people and not actually indwell them and seal them. Because you had that, that's how it was in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit didn't actually steal anyone. The Holy Spirit could come upon people and leave people. That's why you had in Saul, you had King Saul, you know, the Holy Spirit left him and an evil spirit from the Lord came and troubled him. And then David went and played the harp and soothed him. Uh, when David himself sinned with Bathsheba in Psalms, he's sitting there praying, God, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Okay, the Holy Spirit was not sealed. He would come upon people, and then he could lead people. It even says that the, that the Spirit of God left King Asa for a while to test him to see how strong he was. If he could make it without the Holy Spirit, like Job did. Because Job didn't have the Holy Spirit indwelt in him. And, you know, when the devil was tempting him and stuff, uh, and he had all that trouble... You know, it, there's no indication that the Holy Spirit was there helping him and giving him strength. So, that was, so God had basically done the same thing to Asa... King Asa and test him, and he fell. Um, Job didn't fall, but Asa did fall, and he started to oppress the people some, and, and he got into some trouble. Today, if someone is truly saved and sealed, the Holy Spirit can't ever leave us. Once you have it, once you have been diligently seeking and you find it, if you find it before death, and, and you find it, then the Holy Spirit seals you, and you can't ever, he doesn't ever leave you. But if you're in that area where you're still diligently seeking, but you haven't actually found it yet, well, he, you know, he can leave. His power and stuff can leave you. He can leave you, and you can fall, and, you know, and then you are condemned to hell because you stop diligently seeking. So this is where I can see how so many people get so many different heresies, and, well, you know, you can't really know that you're saved until after death. Um, or, uh, anyone who is sincere in their beliefs is going to go to heaven, or I can see where they get all this because they're taking different things out of context and they're not, like, studying it all out and understanding it. Um, I can see where they get lots of salvation because it kind of appears that these people are in, they're diligently seeking and they haven't found it yet, but then they stop and they fall away. Okay, well, now they're condemned to hell. So they're, but it's... It's not truly a lost salvation because they were never truly saved yet. They were only seeking. Um, so all of those teachings that can lead to really bad heresies, I see where they get it. 
But they've got to put all the verses together. They've got to take everything in the context and really look at it to understand what the Bible is saying. You know, a person can be saved like I have been to where they find the truth a long time before they die. I mean, I haven't died yet. So, well, I died once and God sent me back, but I'm still here. Um, uh, you know, um, I found it and I knew before, uh, before I ever even died and then God did send me back. Um, and I know that I'm saved and, you know, I can't lose it. The Holy Spirit isn't dwelling me. Because and how how can we fully sure know that? Because I've got like God, how do I explain this so that people can truly know that whether or not they are sealed? You know, do they have they found it yet? Have they truly committed? How do they know if they found it yet? When that or do they have to? You know, so I was asking it about that, and it says, um, Romans 8, 13 through 17 answers this. Okay. It says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify or kill the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the Spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the Spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with all spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So, the Spirit of God will tell you if you are truly saved or not. Okay? So if you're diligently seeking, you know, you can go and you can pray. And I have done this a lot because I'll get to doubt my salvation and think, well, did I really get saved? And the Holy Spirit will come and say, okay, yes, you got saved when you was 12 years old. You fully committed. You haven't, uh, I've never let you fall into any really bad sins that a saved person cannot do. And, um, you know, you're mine. And, and every time, you know, he tells me that. So, the Holy Spirit will tell you, so just go pray and ask God, you know, God, am I truly saved? Am I truly indwelt? Or am I on the, am I thorny or stony ground? And then, you know, and you just pray and just talk to God about it and just stay there and keep praying. And if you find that you're not truly saved, ask God to show you what you need. Because, like, when my brother got saved, he, we didn't know what the problem was for about 12 hours or sometime. I mean, he he was like, well, something's wrong. I, you know, I'm, I'm not saved. And finally he realized the Holy Spirit broke through and showed him that he didn't truly believe in the resurrection of Jesus, the bodily resurrection of Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit was able to fix that. And the Holy Spirit was like, and then he was like, well, I don't have any proof that Jesus rose from the dead. And the Holy Spirit was like, well, you have to trust it like a child Trust his mother to take care of him, even though he has no proof of it. And so he was able to do that and grabbed a hold of it and he got saved. So, you know, it can be, it, 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 it can be, um, uh, take some time and it can take a lot of prayer. But until you get peace, you know, don't give up, don't, don't stop praying, don't stop seeking until you get that peace and assurance from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to give the assurance of salvation. If the Holy Spirit is not giving the assurance of salvation, then then it, you're not saved. And you need to just keep praying and keep seeking until, and you just keep saying, God, show me what, what am I missing? Have I not committed? Am I not believing something right? What am I missing? Show me how to fix this. And God will show you because he's not up there. He doesn't want you to go to hell. He, he wants you to be saved. And so if you just keep praying, you know, the and, you know, when you truly get saved, then the Holy Spirit will give you that assurance. Um, but uh, this, you know, so uh, we are to diligently seek God. We are to do everything that we know to do and can do to make sure that we are truly saved. And also, you know, also, you know, watch yourself. If you find that you end up doing something, you know, like if you, 
uh, end up falling into a really bad sin. Um, well, that's proof right there that you wasn't saved. Um, so then you would, then you would know and you would need to, you know, get saved at that point. He will still save you no matter what you do, even if you murder someone or whatever, he will save you. Um, you can't think, oh, I messed up too bad now, God won't save me. No, he will save you, um, no matter what you fall into. Um, but just know that if you do fall into something like theft or adultery or something like that, um, if you watch the video, sins a saved person cannot do. Uh, if you find that you've fallen into any of those or that you, uh, or in the future, if you fall into something, okay, that means you won't say, you weren't truly sealed with the Holy Spirit. He did not seal you. He did not keep you. That means you were missing something and you weren't truly saved. And now you need to go to God and really seek him. Because it, remember, it says you have to deal. It's not going to be a five minute prayer. It's not, it's not just believing facts and saying a fast prayer. It's diligently seeking. If you're struggling, you have got to just keep praying and keep seeking until that peace comes. Until you break through. Until you find it. Because it's not God that's stopping it. It's the devil. Because he don't want you to get saved. It's a, it, there's a spiritual war going on. Okay? You got God fighting to get you saved. And the devil's fighting to stop you from getting saved. And sometimes it's a battle. It was a battle when my brother got saved. It was a really bad battle. I've seen it with my own eyes. And, you know, so if you're in that, just just don't give up. Just keep praying. And the biggest thing is just pray and pray. And, I mean, it was it was quite a battle. And you just have to keep praying. Um, because you can't give yourself the assurance. Believing that you're saved does not save you. Okay, um, I've heard Baptist preachers say, well, you just have to, well, you ask God to save you, you have to believe that he saved you. Well, if that, that almost sent my brother to hell. Because he didn't truly believe in the resurrection. Like I said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Sometimes we don't know what's wrong. And it takes a spirit of, because the devil has blinded our eyes. It says, if our gospel be hid, it's the devil that's blinded the eyes. Okay, um... The devil can blind your eyes to the problem. And you have to pray through that. And you have to break through that. Okay. Um, it's not. A, you have to diligently seek God. It's not always just a fast prayer. Some people. it's They struggle with it. But don't give up. Because your soul is on the line. You will break through. You will get the victory. You just have to keep in there. Um. And, um, you know, a person who is truly sealed with the Holy Spirit and saved, they cannot lose it. They can't fall bad enough to lose it. Ephesians one thirteen says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. See, the Holy Spirit... If you're truly saved, you're sealed until the day of redemption. That means you cannot deny Christ. You cannot fall. You can't commit adultery. You can't commit murder. You can't fall bad enough to be able to not go to heaven. Okay? Because the Bible says, uh, and then it says, um, you know, if we believe not, yet he abideth faith, when we in the Holy Spirit, he cannot deny himself. A saved person can become angry with God and temporarily be like, well, I don't even know if God cares about me or if he's even there. And then he'll quickly come, and if you're truly saved, he will quickly come and and uh, keep you from falling any worse. You know, um, what this is speaking of, where it says that they cannot go into idolatry, they cannot deny him, that is speaking of, like, t becoming an atheist, totally falling away and lead leading other people away. Christians can get angry with God. They can get frustrated. They may not understand things, but God will come and quickly hold them up and keep them from falling. They're not going to become an atheist. They're not going to walk away. They're not, you know, they're not going to completely walk away like that. Um, and it says, uh, you know, a truly saved person cannot fall away, you know, like a, you know, and do the sins that a lost person can do. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. 
Jude 1, 24 through 25 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, all Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. See, if you're truly saved, he keeps you from falling into those really bad sins. The Bible says if you do those sins, you're not going to heaven. That's the assurance of salvation. That's the ceiling. He's not going to allow us to fall bad enough to where we would lose our salvation if he is sealed in us. Okay. Um, John 10, 27 through 30 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Uh, my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So see... A truly saved person cannot fall away bad enough to pluck themselves out of God's hand. That's not saying, like I was taught, well, a saved person can commit murder and adultery and all that, but they're still saved because that doesn't pluck them out of God's hand. No, the Bible says if you commit murder or adultery, you're going to hell. You're not saved. You can't go to heaven. So this does not mean that a saved person can do those sins and still go to heaven. This means that a truly saved person cannot do those sins. The Holy Spirit will not allow them to do those sins. They cannot do those sins and pluck themselves out of God's hand. They're not going to be able to do those sins. If somebody does those sins, they were never saved. They may have been at one point on thorny ground or stony ground and been diligently seeking, but then they fell away and now they, they need to get saved. You know, they need to start diligently seeking again and they need to, you know, find salvation and get saved uh, so they don't fall away again. Um... So, you know, um, the Bible teaches that how a person dies determines their eternity. Now, it's true. If you find salvation before you die, like, like I did, okay, and like many people do, if you find salvation and you're in dwelt, then you will die faithful. You, we have that promise. That's what the Holy Spirit, that's the whole reason for the sealing of the Holy Spirit. Okay, when we it was when the person truly finds salvation, they truly understand it, they truly commit, they truly repent of those sins and commit to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in and he seals them and they have a promise they will not fall away like that. Okay, um, but, uh, uh, but others who like are on the stony ground or the thorny ground, um, if they're diligently seeking him, and they haven't fallen away, and they die, they go to heaven. Uh, the Bible says, in Revel they're saved after death. The Bible says in Revelation 2.10, Feel none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. That crown of life is eternal life. That is salvation. It's not a special martyr's crown. It's not that's not what it is. That's what I was taught it was. But it is salvation. It's eternal life. Okay. Um, Hebrews, and like I said, Hebrews 11.6 says, We have to diligently seek him. Hebrews 11.6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay. So someone who believes the basic gospel um, and they're seeking him, and they just, they don't understand something, they're, they're confused about things, uh, and, and they've, you know, they've committed to him, and they're trying to serve him, and they're sincerely trying to live for Christ and serve Christ, and, and obey the gospel, even if they don't understand everything completely, if they've missed something, um, if they die, if they die for Christ, or if they die and they're still faithful, they're still diligently seeking, they are saved at death or shortly after, because the Bible says, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Shall be. Okay, so that's those saved after death. Okay, now, a lot of Baptists will be like, well, no, no, you can't get saved after death because the Bible says, uh, is appointed and a man wants to die and then the judgment. Okay, um, that's true. The Bible does say that. So let's go look at that one. Um, let me find Hebrews. Who is that at? I had it in my notes. I guess I'll just find it in my Bible. So Hebrews 9.27. Um, uh, 
Oh, that's 10. Okay. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, a judgment. Okay. Um, yes. Once you die, it's judgment. And it's appointed unto man once to die. But let's see. I already died once and came back. So, you know, I may die again or I may live till the rapture. Um, a lot of people die once, come back, and then die again later. Um, it's appointed once to die, but that can be changed. Um, God is God, and he decides. Uh, so it's appointed the man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. Well, yes, those judgment, these people who die diligently seeking, but they haven't found yet, and they die for him, like the ones of Revelation, well, you know, they were under the altar. Um, they received judgment. Their judgment was, Jesus said, give them white robes. That was a judgment. It was a good judgment. Because judgment can be good or bad. Okay? They died for Christ. They were judged worthy of salvation. Their judgment was, you're worthy of salvation, so here's a white robe and follow me to living waters. To fountains of living water. I'm going to sit down and explain to you the true gospel. I'm going to show you what you were missing. And now you can accept that and, and, um, you're, you know, it's, judgment is not always a bad thing. Um, these people, yeah, they die and then they're judged. But at their judgment, they are saved. Part of the judgment is them getting saved, them un fully understanding the gospel. Um, because they were missing something. Um, so this is not saying, so this is, what this is saying is, yes, we can find true salvation before death. Okay, we can find true salvation. We can know that we'll say we can be sealed and we can have true salvation where we can never lose it. That is absolutely possible and that is the best way. Okay, but God also has mercy. It says if we diligently seek him, we shall find him. Well, what if, what happens if they're diligently seeking him and um, they die? Well, he that endures to the end, they were diligently seeking him. So when did they have found him after death? And then he that endured to the end shall be saved. They were faithful in the death. They endured to the end. Especially if they were martyred for him. You know, then they go to heaven. They'll save. They get saved. He saves them after death. It is not, um, you know, it's, it's not like, okay, you didn't understand something, right? And you were faithful and died for me, and I'm just going to send you to hell because you didn't understand something, right? God is not that way. He says, I will have mercy upon whom I have mercy and judgment upon whom I have judgment. Now, I do want to make it very clear that, you know, you need to do everything. You know, you need to make sure that you are truly saved and indwelt and not just in the diligently seeking time because you don't want to fall away. You don't want to take that chance. You and, and since you have the truth, you know, you just have to you have to grab a hold of that truth and not let it go and and beg God for that peace. If you know, if it's a if it's difficult, it doesn't have to be difficult, but I've seen with some people it is. Um and it's not God doesn't make it difficult. You've got the devil fighting, you have your own heart is deceitful. Uh, and desperately wicked. Um, and some people struggle like that. I, you know, I didn't. I got saved when I was 12 years old. I got saved before the age of accountability. I was still a child. I hadn't gotten any trouble or anything. I mean, I stole some candy when I was 10. It was the worst thing I ever did. Um, you know, but I didn't have like any, I wasn't entangled in sin and stuff. It wasn't hard for me. And, and it's really great when it's not hard for you. But with my brother, uh, he was struggling with believing the resurrection and didn't even realize that that was the problem for hours. Um, and, you know, and I really seen him struggle and then I seen it break through and he got saved. And I'm going, okay. And that really got me thinking, well, this salvation stuff is not to where you just pray a prayer and believe that you're saved and so you're saved. That's what the Baptists teach down that I was raised around and that is, that's sending people to hell. And, you know, I do think that possibly a lot of Baptists, you know, they'll make a profession of faith as a child. And then one of the things that the pastor, I've heard a lot of Baptist preachers say, is they'll preach a sermon on committing your life to Christ. And they'll be like, well, you may have been saved for years, but maybe you haven't fully committed your life to Christ. You need to come down here and fully commit your life to Christ. 
And I'm just kind of wondering in God's book of life in heaven, how many of those Baptists, when they go down to that altar, you know, they made a profession of faith, and they've been in church, and they've been diligently seeking, but they just hadn't ever really done that full commitment. And if they go down to that altar in that sermon and make that full commitment, how many of those Baptists has God go, oh, finally, okay, uh, give me the book of life and a pen. Here's their name. And their name just got wrote down. I mean, maybe that is something the Spirit of God has kind of put in the hearts of these pastors to kind of help make sure that these Baptists get saved because, I mean, they literally teach that you say a prayer when you're five years old and you just believe that you're saved and that then, then you got saved at that time. It doesn't matter what you did or what you do. I mean, I've heard that all my life and that <laughs> that's not true. Um, that is not true. And so, you know, I just wonder, like, in those services where those pastors are getting up and preaching on totally committing your life to Christ, well, how many of their church members just got saved? Because they finally got it. Oh, I need to totally commit myself to Christ. Okay. And Christ is sitting up there going, yep, that was the only thing they needed. Okay, write their name down. They're saved now. And the Holy Spirit go, actually goes in and indwells them at that moment. Um, because, you know, the Bible says that the, the Bible does show those different levels of belief. It says Jesus, that, that those people in, uh, and so what it is, is there is like different levels of belief and you don't get truly saved and and dwell with the Holy Spirit until you get the whole thing. Like you, um, you get the commitment and everything because you have the word, you do have what belief means to be persuaded. Okay. Um, so you have here, um, in John 2, 25 it says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name. They were persuaded. Okay? They believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. They were persuaded of who he was. They knew he was God in the flesh. They knew he was the Messiah. They were persuaded. They believed all the facts. But then there's something really interesting. It says, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men. And he did not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. They were persuaded, but they were not fully committed. And without that full commitment, the Holy Spirit does not enter into you, and he does not seal you, and you can fall away and be condemned to hell. You can, you can fall away. Um, bad enough to where you, you're condemned to hell and you don't get, you know, um, so, you know, but you can find it. You can find the truth. You can, if you diligently seek him, you can find it before death and you can truly know that you're saved. Um, and then, you know, someone who is diligently seeking and they just, and they think they're saved and, but it, they're not really, and they die, as long as they die faithful, uh, then God will have mercy on them and he will lead them to salvation after death. That's what Revelation showed. That's what, you know, it says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. Um, you know, I've done the best I can to go through the Bible and try to explain this biblically. I am not saying that all all who are sincere in their whatever faith is going to heaven. That's, that's not true. Okay. Um, they have to be seeking Christ and the gospel they have to be they have to be seeking Christ they you know they have to be trying to serve him they have to be diligently seeking him um and then if they die faithful and die diligently seeking God will save them after death that's the point here it's not I'm not saying that all religions lead to heaven and everyone faithful in their beliefs goes to heaven no um, it's just that God has mercy on whom he will have mercy. And there's a few promises that if someone is diligently seeking Christ and diligently trying to obey him and they're doing the best that they know how, that if they die faithful to him and if they die for him, especially if they die for him, then they are, then Christ will save them. He will lead them to living water after to fountains of living water after uh, salvation. I mean, after death. Um, 
Like I said, don't take that chance. I mean, you don't want to, you know, don't don't be like, oh, I'll be okay. Because then you're not diligently seeking him. Because the diligently seek him means that anytime you find truth, you grab a hold of that truth. And you, ta- and you make that truth yours. And so you have the truth today. So if you are not sure that you're saved, if you, you know, then make sure that you are truly saved, you're truly in doubt, dwelt. The Holy Spirit will let you know. It says the, Sp- the Holy Spirit bears witness with all spirits that we are the children of God. Okay. The Holy Spirit will let you know if you are truly saved or not. Um, and until he does, you keep diligently seeking. You keep praying. You know, and um, that's my point today. I know that um, if some of the some Baptists get a hold of this and find this sermon, they're going to brand me as a heretic. Um, but I'm truly trying to just go through the Bible and show exactly what it says and explain these things because I know there's a lot of false doctrines, a lot of heresies swarming around this. Um, I have tried to take all the scriptures and keep them in context and look at them and try to find the truth. And um, if you've got other verses that shows that something I've said is wrong, I would be happy to take a look at it. Um, this is one of those things that, you know, this is, I know this is dangerous ground. This is one of those things that it kind of scares me because I'm like, well, you know, I've heard some of these things and people take them way off and I know that's that they go into heresies with them. Um what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find truth and you've got like in Revelation, I mean, those people the the souls are under the altar. They're not with the other Christians. They're in heaven but they don't have white robes yet. Then and they're praying for vengeance on their enemies. Um and then God orders them to have white robes. Um and then uh, you know, he, he orders them to have white robes and then uh, he says that it, it says that he leads them to living waters because John was like, well, I don't know who the, he said, well, who are these people that are, that are in these white robes? And John said, well, thou knowest. See, John didn't recognize them as regularly saved people. You know. Um, so this is a different group. This is somebody else. This is someone who, these are the people who are saved after death because they endured, they stayed faithful to death, they endured to the end, and these ones actually died for Christ. You can't get a better commitment than that. I mean, somebody dies for Christ, he's not going to send them to hell. Um, you know, um, so that's the point of all this. Um, you know, uh... You know, um, and so, uh, that's the, uh, uh, point of all this is that, yes, we can know that we'll say before, uh, you know, while we're still living, we don't have to wait till death. But for those who are on the thorny ground or the stony ground, if they don't understand something, if they're diligently seeking, if they're in the process of seeking and they just haven't found yet, God doesn't throw them away and send them to hell, he he will save them after death. Um, and Revelation shows that. And so that's what I've tried to bring out in this. And if you're not sure that you're saved, you know, please go watch the video, How to Get to Heaven. You can also watch the other video, Sins a Saved Person Cannot Do. And, you know, just um, go watch those and, you know, pray and seek God until he gives you that assurance of salvation. You know, just just make a commitment to Christ and believe in him. Um, believe the gospel. And, you know, if you're struggling, um, just keep just keep praying until you until the Holy Spirit gives you that assurance. It's got to be the Holy Spirit that gives you the assurance. It can't be a preacher. It can't be yourself. It's not, oh, you believe that you're saved, so you're saved. No. Um, so, you know... The Holy Spirit has to give that assurance. And it's not that God doesn't want to save you. It's that the devil's fighting. Or it could be that uh, you're not understanding something and you need understanding. Um, you may not know what the problem is. Uh, God wants to save you. So, you know, you just keep uh, you just keep praying and keep seeking. And he will, because it promises, if you diligently seek him, you will find him. 
Um, you know, just keep watching the the videos on how to be saved. Just keep praying and keep seeking. And when you truly get saved, the Holy Spirit will give you that assurance. Um, and so that's um, everything for today. And uh, we'll go ahead and get ready to close here. Um, okay, we'll go ahead and pray and close. And then um, I'll do the uh, blessing over you in English and then in, or in Hebrew and then in English. And then we'll be dismissed today. Um, dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you will uh, help us to understand your word and anyone who's not sure that they're saved, that you will help them to get saved and give them that assurance of salvation and um, help them uh, and give them the peace and assurance of salvation. And if they're not understanding something right, help them to understand it, help them to obey it. And um, pray that you'll bless us today and give us a good day and a safe week. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and do the blessing now. Ya Barakaka Adonai, but Yish Mevoka, Ya Er Adonai, but Panav Aleka V Kuneka, Yisa Adonai, Panav Aleka V Sem Laka Shalom. The Lord bless thee and keep thee, the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And, uh, thank you so much for watching this week. I hope you all come back next week and, uh, uh, join us for another Bible study, um, and um, we do have the uh, support links in the uh, uh, description for Patreon and PayPal, so, you know, if God lays it on your heart to support our ministry, so we can have more resources to reach more people for Christ, so that they can learn the truth of salvation, you know, if they're seeking, we can get the truth of salvation to them, and they can know that they're saved, and they can be sealed, um, and they, they're not at risk of uh, falling away like that, uh, you know, please use the Patreon or PayPal links in the description, and thank you so much, and may God bless you, and, you know, if you're not sure that you're saved, just go watch the video on how to be saved, and just keep watching it, and keep praying, and keep seeking until God gives you that assurance. The assurance must come from God, okay? Don't let Christians get impatient with you. It's your soul on the line, not theirs. You're the one who's going to, who could spend eternity in hell. It's not them. Okay, so don't let another Christian try to be impatient with me and say, well, you just have to believe it or, you know, you just keep seeking. You keep seeking until you find it, um, you know, until you get that peace and that assurance. Keep seeking and, you know, don't give up. Um, well, thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a blessed week. Bye. Thank you.